pray that your spirit would open our minds to the scriptures so that we may hear the voice of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Old reading, Old Testament reading, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle lesson today is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 through 24. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything, beloved, and our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive for him, from him, whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them, and by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus teaches us saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming <clears throat> and leaves. And the, leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me just as my father knows me, and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> this fourth Sunday in the season of Easter is known in many churches as Good Shepherd Sunday. On this day, our lectionary always offers us a portion of the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to John, a chapter in which Jesus not only calls himself the Good Shepherd, but even the gate to the sheepfold. And every single year, it's suggested that we read the 23rd Psalm on this day. Then we read that today from the King James Version, which is the way many of us probably memorized it. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not necessarily a compliment to be compared to a sheep. I have a friend in New Waterford, Ohio, who's raised sheep for decades and he doesn't have many complimentary things to say about their intelligence. But shepherds play a big part in the Bible. Moses was a shepherd before he led God's people to freedom. 
David was a shepherd before he became the king against whom all other kings of Israel would be measured. Shepherds, they lead and feed and heal and care. <clears throat> the 23rd Psalm is an extraordinarily personal prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me. My cup runneth over. Someone has written that this psalm sits up with the believer in the challenges of sleepless nights and uncertain days. We may very well have recited it in hard times when no other words would come. This psalm assures us that God is with us even in the valley. That not only is God leading us, but that goodness and mercy follow us. The Lord sets a table for us and gives us rest. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. And what he means by that is what the 23rd Psalm tells us. That he has that close relationship with us. I know my own and my own know me. He will lead and protect us even with his life. He'll stick with us. No wonder the 23rd Psalm is so beloved, and no wonder that when we picture the Lord who is our shepherd, it's Jesus we see. How many pictures of Jesus can we remember holding a lamb surrounded by the herd? Our shepherd, our caregiver, our constant companion. I know my own, he says, and my own know me. My own know me. I don't know how much this happens anymore, but it seems that I used to run into a lot of people who would say, do you know Jesus? And I always got the feeling that the person asking the question was pretty sure that they knew it well, but they weren't too sure about anybody else. Well, we do have to have some humility, don't we, before we claim to know Jesus' opinion on every subject. We experience him as our own good shepherd. We trust him to lead us. But aren't there times when we honestly don't know where he wants us to go? When we don't know which fork in the road leads to green pastures? Some years ago, Roger Nishioka told a story that stuck with me for many, many years. He told it at the new Wilmington Missionary Conference. Now, Roger was one of four brothers, the youngest of whom was named Brendan. And Brendan could not tolerate sugar. It made him hyperactive. So, of course, any time the older children in the family were called upon to look after the younger ones, their favorite entertainment was feeding Brendan lots of sugary cereal that he was never allowed to eat. And then they just sit back and see what happens. <laughs> One day, Roger and his brother Jason bought a dozen maple butterscotch maple bars in support of their middle school band. They thought they snuck them into the house without either Brendan or their mother seeing them. And so they ran upstairs, closed the door, and started stuffing these butterscotch maple bars <laughs> into their mouths. Then came a knock at the door. Brendan, you're eating, and I'm going to tell you're supposed to share. Knocked again. You're supposed to share. And then, Roger says, Brendan made his fatal mistake. He said, Mom said I could have some. Mom said I could have some of whatever you're eating. No, his older brothers answer. We know our mother. Our mother would never tell you that you could have sugar. Our mother would never tell us that you could have sugar. So, 
when Brendan declares that he's going to tell on them anyway, they ask him this question. Which would make our mother more angry, that we didn't share, or that her youngest son lied and tried to invoke her authority falsely? Or <laughs> well, they knew their mother's voice, and they knew their mother's voice would never say, give Brendan some sugar. It was not her voice. It could not be her call. They knew that. Absolutely. If we know Jesus' voice, we can follow his call. We can do what he leads us to do. We hear his voice as we read the Gospels, and we hear Jesus' voice especially clearly when we read the Gospels together. For even though Jesus is the good shepherd of each of us, we live within a flock that is called together. And it keeps us humble to hear the shepherd's voice as others hear it. Together, we get to know his voice. Together, we recognize it. And together, we get to know him. Learning to recognize the shepherd's voice, that's a continuing process for us. But we can be absolutely sure that he knows us, knows us in all our diversity and differences. When a former president of the United States died in office, thousands of people, many of them, most of them, probably, from very different backgrounds than the presidents, wind the tracks as the funeral train chugged to its destination. A reporter asked a mourner, why are you here? Did you know him? And the mourner replied, no, I did not know the president, but he knew me. That mourner believed that the president understood his own hopes and fears, despite the great differences between them, which is the way a human shepherd knows his sheep, not by being a sheep himself or herself, but by loving them, being close to them, understanding them. The way we get to know each other if we pay attention and stay close and listen. The gospel according to John and the epistles of John speak constantly, you might say repetitively, about our call to love one another as Jesus loves us. John's gospels and letters were written to a community that knew persecution from without and a community that knew schism from within as some members were breaking away. It was important for that fledgling church to stick together, to love one another. These writings from John have less to say about loving our neighbors. We hear that much more from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But we do hear the Good Shepherd say, I have other sheep that aren't here in this fold, and I must bring them into the flock. What other sheep? There's been much speculation about that, but most likely he meant Gentiles, non Jews. He meant us. So, as we hear those words, who are the other sheep now who must be brought in? At the very least, Jesus is telling us to be hospitable because we never know who he is bringing into the fold. We never know who's being gathered in to hear the shepherd's voice, gathered in to love and to be loved, gathered where we can listen to each other's voices. 
gathered to where we come to listen and to love one another. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd, the shepherd of a flock. A flock that gets to know him together, listens to him together, follows him together. We follow the shepherd who knows us, who calls us to know one another, and who calls us to get to know those who are yet to be gathered in. Amen. God, we come to you with our needs and the needs of the world, confident that you hear our voices. We come knowing that you already know us, and that those things which we cannot or dare not ask are already known to you. God, our Creator, your Son Jesus, our Shepherd, has called us into his flock. We pray for his church around the world. We pray especially for those who serve him under conditions that we cannot imagine, for those who must travel long distances for worship, for those who are persecuted, for all churches that struggle to serve. Help us above all to be faithful in our worship and in our service to our neighbors. Merciful God, we pray for neighbors in need, for the sick, for sorrowing, the anxious, for afraid, for those who know hunger of body or spirit. Use us as you will to be instruments of your care and your love. Almighty God, we pray for the healing of nations, give wisdom and strength to those in authority, and help us all to further your kingdom of justice and peace. God of all power, 
You called from death our Lord Jesus, the good and great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Teach us, we pray, to recognize the shepherd's voice so that we may follow faithfully and not be led astray. We pray for your kingdom as Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time when we give our gifts to God, although we aren't passing the place quite yet. Uh, remember, there's a basket at the back of the sanctuary uh, to receive your gifts. And let us remember to always be filled with joy and thanksgiving for all that God has done.
strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the eternal God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day. Thank you.